Am I audible? Thank you, Kavya, for that introduction. I hope I'm audible to everyone. If somebody can just, yes, that's it. Dear friends, colleagues, peers, partners, associates in the industry, I'm being given to understand that will be Chief C. Mansook Mandavia's uh, uh, recorded statement as well. Uh, Minister of State, Minister of Ports, Waterways, and Minister of State for Chemicals and Fertilizer. Just wanted to name him because he's been uh, one of the fundamentals in driving the supply chain during the crisis. Uh, we also need to uh, acknowledge the guest of honor, Kumar Agarwal, Special Secretary Logistics, who has been continuously in touch with almost all the participants in the logistics uh, summits in every, every occasion that he's been uh, around and then supported us all through. Well, I must tell you that this is, a wonder, this is wonderful to note that the Economic Times has created this platform for various entities across the supply chain and logistics ecosystems to come together virtually, collaborate, and these perspectives to drive the industry forward. As Mr. George said, three things, technology, visibility, and automation. I completely endorse that. Considering the current circumstances, there real, they really could not have been a better theme than surviving uncertainty. We have an impressive line of, I'm told, who I would, wa would want to hear from, while I would not want to miss this opportunity put, to put forth a uh, few of my views as well. In, in the past year, uh, in the past year is anything to go by, it's been a tough year for every single one of us, billion and a half. The supply chain and the logistics industry has been on a roller coaster of unprecedented challenges. Right from the port congestions, like how we have said, the blockage of the Swiss Canal, full and partial lockdowns across countries, had its impact of COVID-19 on de demand and supply delivery requirements. It went through tremendous fluctuations globally and in India, which was no exception. While we began our economic recovery around September, October 2020, only to be caught off guard recently by the severity with which the second wave of COVID-19 stuck us constant flux mean for business continuity and contingency planning? How do you strategize and plan ahead? These are a few of the questions that we keep uh, uh, pondering upon. No matter how you frame the questions, there's only one answer. Agility and flexibility in supply chain. We can't plan for something that we don't know, what, but we can build the knowledge and capabilities and organizational culture that can equip us to embrace the change and keep going. This has been one of our most significant takeaway from this challenging year and is a sentiment I'm sure many of others here will share. It is also remarkable how the supply chain and the logistics industry proved its metal and kept the business going. Be it deliveries of essential goods and products, or making sure medical supplies and equipments got to their destinations on time. It is our own team out there at various locations from ports, warehouses, factories, going across the world. They came out and did their best while the rest of us could stay home and stay safe. Our, tree, our, our team members truly went out of their way, even to the extent of physically going to help diet movements and simplifying process for our customers. We're also thankful to the government where we could work with them in transportation of oxygen cylinders, concentrators, and masks from Singapore, China, USA to different parts of the country. I would say kudos to the supply and logistics industry for turning a crisis into an opportunity to change the way we function and be more effective with our healthcare problems on the front lines. I do also want to salute our logistics hero 
who have been the frontline guys who handled entire logistics in in our country trust me we may have kept the supply chains running so far but if we have to go further as this will not be enough with in raw materials distributing finished goods stocking inventory no matter what you will need supply chain management and logistics to evolve as business requirements are evolving it's not a matter of choice but the need of the hour so it's worthwhile to understand how supply chains have changed in the past year they have diversified for better risk management there is an approach to strike the right balance between just in time and inventory management new delivery model cater to changing consumption patterns all this has led to change in the demand for warehousing their locations have completed the operations typically has changed especially with covid 19 already in existence because safety the integration of safety at every stage of supply chain is of utmost importance to all of us lockdowns curfews and social distancing we are now strengthening our abilities to work with minimal on ground staff and focusing on automation so said automation is going to be key as we move forward while yes about a decade a decade ago maybe in india as he rightly uh, uh, pointed out warehouse management systems uh, uh, were probably not even known to many of us i mean there were few like us who obviously embraced in years back but many many of us in the industry did not embrace it but today that's the need of the hour one of the biggest consideration for supply chain players is to navigate all the changes and yet ensure efficiency across supply chain especially in india where the logistic cost is we just can't afford redundancy and inefficiencies streamlining streamlining our industry is a super human task and so we need to leverage the super pluralization speed up process and enable information and data exchange along the entire supply chain digitalization is a real game changer citing our own experiences as you all know we are the global lcl leader in consolidation moving across 180 countries through our 300 plus offices our digital portal eq360 have proved to be a significant advantage to us and our customers while in india gati kwe our enterprise uh, wide software technology that allowed for better routing gps tracking and genie our whatsapp chatbot for instant assistance to customers have definitely had a positive impact on as we know in india the supply chain and the logistics in industry is estimated to touch for usd 300 plus billion by the end of 2021 i have no doubt that these aspirations will only be strengthened by digitalization as the world's second most populous country with over 16% of the world's population as compared to the third most populous country which has little more than 4% of the world's population the challenges and opportunities for india are real. any nationwide initiative is bound to require immense amount of skill expertise and more importantly this while impl- uh, more importantly through and thorough planning we have experienced this while implementing gst and are experiencing as we have embarked on one of the most ambitious and the biggest vaccination drives to protect our citizens from covid-19 i believe if this chain and the logistics industry steps up it can lend great strength to india's progress for we are a sector critical to every other with government that is focused on development our dreams are big implementing the national logistics policy creating dedicated freight flows making our multimodal transportation mix 
sustainable by integrating waterways, investments in physical and digital infrastructure for logistics are all in the right direction. I must here express full appreciation to the government, the team of ministers and the team members who have been closely working with all the logistics association and industry leaders to get this in motion. As representatives of the supply chain and the at an organization level, as well as through various membership, numerous advisory bodies and associations, our endure has always been to communicate, deliberate, and collaborate with all stakeholders to eventually bring the India supply chain and logistics industry on par with that of these across the world. I truly, I truly could not have been happier and more proud as we power the eighth economic times and supply chain management summit that brings us together to share knowledge and ideas. I look forward to hearing all from you. I conclude, I would like to wish good health, safety to all of you and your family members. Take care, get COVID-19 vaccination, and in the face of uncertainties, let's emerge stronger together. God bless and enjoy the rest of the session. Thank you so much indeed, uh, Mr. Hegde. Thank you always for uh, sharing your uh, visionary thoughts with us all. And in fact, the parting note that you shared about, most importantly, in uncertain times, how all of us can uh, emerge stronger by being together. So thank you once again for joining us this morning, sharing across the different trends and the different initiatives uh, taken in. And for all of us, I'm sure we've had some fabulous takeaways from your session, from your keynote address. Thank you once again, sir. Thank you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm sure we can see that there's always a floating audience. That's the beauty about the virtual summit. In a physical avatar, maybe what happens is if a hall decides that only 1,000 people can attend, then only 1,000 people can. But with a virtual summit, it's just all encompassing in such a way that it just is boundaryless. So I'm sure that with all of you joining us again, a warm welcome to those who have also joined us in the last few minutes. Let me also take you through something very important because there's something called as an experience zone. And I want you all to please uh, take note that while you notice your virtual screen over there, the platform with real uh, uh, conversations, the experience zone is where all the partners have exhibited their booths. In fact, one can go to all of these different booths and see their brochures in order to understand what they have to offer. You can also interact with these partners and the booth representatives and also set up meetings with them. So please do ensure that in between the sessions as and when time permits, you can also visit these experience zones and uh, take a look at what the partners have to offer in terms of new initiatives um, uh, with all of you. So with that, let's uh, march ahead because uh, as you can all take a look at the agenda, it's now time for all of us uh, to deep dive into the chief guest address. In fact, uh, we are focusing on infra for growth, boosting economic development through maritime. And uh, we are truly, truly honored to have uh, Sri Mansukh Mandavia, Honorable Minister of State, Independent Charge, Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways and Ministry, Minister of State for Chemical and Fertilizers, Government of India, to share his thoughts with all of us at the eighth annual edition of the summit. So on that note, uh, let's uh, move forward towards the chief guest uh, address that will just commence in uh, the next few seconds. <laughs> 